All right, moving on to theme number two, 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 two. Let's take a look. All right, so as you know, um, this week we decided it would be fun to talk about aprons. So it's apron week this week. As we get ready for the countdown to the holidays and I'm sure lots of baking is going on and lots of parties and all of the above. So aprons make great gifts, but they also make great items to wear in your own home. And so all of the three at three contributors have come together and we've said, okay, each day we are going to do focus on a different apron. So yesterday, Barb and Kyle did the gathering apron. Really fun. Thought that was a great demo. And so today, my focus is going to be on a child's apron. I don't know how many of you remember um, times when you baked with grandma or grandpa or mom or dad or, you know, a, a special person in your life, or how many of you have, um, do the same thing with the children in your lives now. Uh, there is something very special. Sometimes it can be a little frustrating, right? But there is something very special about taking time around the, the kitchen counter and playing with all the things, um, the, the flour and the sugar and making absolute messes. That's what creates great memories. And so um, one of the fun things to do uh, for the kids is to have their very own apron. And this is um, an idea that's been out there for a long time. So it might not be new to you, but it is all about making a, a child's apron out of a tea towel. All right. And you know us, we love our tea towels around here. Um, yay, Debbie said, this will be great. A friend just asked me to make two children's aprons. Perfect. Who knew, Debbie? And I know you, Debbie, you love, you're all about making memories, which I think is really amazing. Um, Lynn says that she always has a flower fight. We have a blast in the kitchen. I love that. Those are the things those kids will remember. Dee shares that her grandmother was a great baker. She made me a sweet apron when I was a little girl. Wish I still had it. I bet you do. That would have been really, really special. So, um, so today I'm going to show you a really simple way to make a child's apron from a tea towel. It is a full-size apron. Um, and I'm going to show you how to kind of change it up a little bit to make pockets, which is going to just be so, so simple. All right. So let's, um, let's come over here. Ooh, I'm a little nervous because my battery is almost dead. Let's see if I should, do I chance it or not? Hmm. Well, let's see what we can do. Okay. We're going to chance it for a minute and see how far we can get. Just made muffins with my favorite four-year-old nephew today. That's awesome, Erin. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to come over here to... Kim's cutting table. I absolutely love her sewing room. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have an apron out. Oh, should I, sh no, I'm gonna wait to show you the apron I made earlier. I'll wait till the very end. Okay, so do you recognize this apron? Or I should say this tea towel. This comes from the ombre tea towel set from Kimberbell. There's a pink one and then there's a green one. Um, it's like it's hand dyed and it has an ombre effect to it. So of course you're going to do this same method with any apron there is. And I think what I'm going to do, because I'm afraid my battery is going to die here. I think I'll go ahead and measure it out, draw my lines. And then we'll move back over to the sewing machine area. How's that? Okay, so the first thing we have to do, let's see if I can get this situated, is that we take the top of our apron and we find the center. And then what we're going to do is go four inches out from each thing. You know what? I'm getting really nervous here. So you, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I should have realized that my battery was dying. I'm gonna come over here and we'll just do it over here. We'll make it work. I got a plug in, hold on. There we go. All right, 
going with the flow. Here we go. So I have my apron here, my tea towel, I should say. I'm going to have the, the dark pink up here. And I want to measure um, four inches from the center. So I actually do have my cord, Judy, but the plug, there's no plug near her cutting counter. I don't believe, unless there's one on one side. I don't think so. Oh, well. Okay, so that's why I'm by a wall. I'm going to find the center of this apron. And I'm going to measure four inches out from the center. And I've got directions for you. So it's all written down. And let's see. I better grab a ruler. Hold on. Good thing I can just roll around here. Okay. So I've got my ruler. I'm measuring four inches from the center point. I'm just going to place a little marking there. One, two, three, four. And I wonder if Kim, is that Kim? Come in here. Come in here. I'm, do you have a, a cord, an outlet on your island by chance? No. Oh. Sheesh, Kim. <laughs> okay. I have an extension cord. Oh, if you have that, that would be Should great. Should I say hello? Yes. Say hi to go. everyone. Here, so we <laughs> hi. Here we go. There we go. See? There she is. <laughs> there she is. Hello. Yay. Hello. Um, if the store says back ordered on a towel, can the color still be ordered? Um, yes, the only towel that it cannot is um, the gray. You guys are Hi, Barb. Hi, Hi, like, Hi, Hi Kimberbell. Hi, Sybil. Kim. <laughs> Kim, at all Kim, of our friends. I know, I know. It's so fun to see them. He, um, the only towel that's out is gray. You guys don't have any more gray. So if you're trying to go for gray, I it's have gone. No idea. It's Chris. a goner. All right. <laughs> I don't, so, I don't know. All right. Hi, Deidre. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kim. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> Betty Ann. We'll keep going. Here we go. Okay, so, do you need me to find a If you could find an cord? extension cord, that would be amazing. Okay, just so you know, you have a little lipstick. Oh, jeez, Kim. Yeah. I have to. I have okay. to. Friends right. tell friends. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mm. I'll find a cord. Thank you, Kim. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. <sighs> Four inches from the center. Um, um, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go four inches from the center on each side, and I'm going to go 10 inches down on each side, and I'm going to draw a line. All right. Do, do, do. So let's do that. Center point. Did you find one? All right. And I'm going to go 10 inches down. And then I'm going to draw a line. This is going to give us um, the angle of like our bib. Okay. Are you trying to? Oh. Am I trying to what? <laughs> Tim's like, are you trying to do what, Chris? <laughs> I would love to be at your cutting counter. Can we do that? I got you. Okay, let's do this. All right, folks. We're ready for a field trip. Okay, let's do this again. Oh! <laughs> oh here we go. Never mind us. Sorry, better? There. Oh, my goodness. It's so much better. Okay, but now I need the ruler, please, because I just took it over there. <laughs> okay. All right. This really, this is actually a very simple apron, and I'm making it much harder than it should be. All right. So this is four inches. No, that's not good. Nothing else. We're good. <laughs> four by ten. Um, so you see that I've drawn the line there. Now, if you were in my class 
but last night. We talked about using your cutting mat to actually help you measure things over. And that's what I often like to do. So I find my center, I put it on a vertical line on my cutting mat, and then I just count over one, two, three, four. Does that make sense? I'm just going over four inches. So center, one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna mark that. And I'm going down 10 inches on this side. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. All right. And I'm going to mark on this side. Did I do that right? Doo -doo. Yeah. There we go. All right. I'm going to mark here. Now, you do not cut on this line. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to measure an inch and a quarter over, and that is the line we're cutting on. Okay, so I'm going to grab my rotary cutter. I'm an inch and one fourth over from the line I just drew. This is going to give us a chance to fold it over and make our casing. So I did it on this side. And now I'm gonna do it on the other side. I'm gonna kind of just turn this around so it's a little bit easier. Here's my line. And then I'm going to go an inch and a quarter from that line. Okay, now, do you see how it's made the angle? Let's see, the angle of the bib. Okay, so at this point, I need to fold it in about a quarter inch, and then I'm going to fold it one more time, this time on the line. Well, I could use an iron, but I'm going to also use instead, because I'm not near an iron, I'm going to use this awesome little folding tool called the fabric folding pin. Do you know it? Do you love it? We often use this pin when it comes to paper piecing or when we're doing piecing in the hoop. Um, but I'll show you another way of using this pin. What it has, it's, it's like a vial of a little fabric solution, fabric softener solution in here. And you just roll that down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch and just run it down my ruler, just like that. Oops. Okay, let me, there we go. And then I will fold it on that line and it's just gonna come right down on that line. It's just, it's really great. If you don't wanna have, if you don't have an iron handy, this is a great way to do it and it's gonna hold the fold. And then I'll do it one more time on that line that I drew. So I've taken my ruler, just done this. What it does again is, is it just softens my fabric right there and it lets that fold over so easily. Have any of you ever used the fabric folding pin in this manner? I'd love to know. Okay. So there we go. See, it, stay, it has stayed folded. It's not coming undone. If I was just trying to finger press it, it would probably come undone. All right, so now I'm gonna get the other side prepared, doing the same thing. I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch from the outside and run my fabric pin right along my ruler. Whoops, there we go, and fold. Okay, pretty nice. Now I'm gonna do it one more time, and this time it's on the line. Now again, you could use a, an iron for this, but I wanted to show you another way I know a lot of you own this to use your fabric folding pin. So that's on the line and then I'm just gonna fold it over one more time. And it stays put, it stays put pretty nicely. 
All right. So now at this point, what I'll do is I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew about one inch, one inch from the edge. All right, because this is what's going to create my casing for my ribbon afterwards. So let's go ahead and head over to the machine. Looks like Pam is using one right now, she says, for embroidery. It loves it. Yeah, I, I love the fabric folding pin. I use it all the time. Okay. Here we go. Hey, fabric. Yeah, a lot of you are loving it. Gail loves it. Becky loves it. Jane says fabric folding pin is fabulous. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to place this down a little bit so you can see this. All right. So with this being done, I'm going to just move this over. You do want to start at the very edge of your apron. All right. Do a little back stitch and keep going forward. And a little back stitch. Okay, trimming my threads. There you go. Can you see that? All right, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's see. There we go. So two stitches, that's all there was to it. Okay, two lines to make your, your casing on the back. All right, um, someone's asking what machine I'm using. I am we're using the Janome 9450 today. So, yep. All right, um, for those of you who are wanting refills, we also sell the refills as well. So if you already own a fabric folding pin and you want a refill, we can help you with that. Okay, so that's really simple, right? You have now the top of your apron, of your child's apron. So what I'm gonna do now is let's um, head over to the cutting table again. See, we're just going all around on a field trip today. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to grab my handy little, handy dandy little drawstring threader. You guys have one of these? They're awesome. Okay. So I'm going to take about two and a half yards of ribbon. And this is why this kind of an apron is so slick. It's just so simple. And I just loop that ribbon, thread it right through the center hole there. And now I'm going to start at the bottom and just loop this all the way through. So just come right here. See how simple that is? There we go. And continue on over to the opposite side. So now I'm coming up through the top. This is a great tool to have. Like, have you ever had a hoodie that the drawstring comes out in the wash? Yeah, I hate that when that happens. Um, this tool will be your best friend. All right, there we go. Look how simple that was. Okay. All right. Ta-da. And pull that out. 
So this is the drawstring threader. All right. Now what we have is almost finished. <laughs> so this is your apron now. And here are your um, straps or, or the sashes that sashing that goes through it. Your ties, I should say. Maybe that's a better word. All right. Isn't that cute with the ombre effect? I love that. Now, if you have like a tall, a tall child, you could certainly keep this the way it is, just like this. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to add pockets. And to add pockets, it's really, really simple. I'm going to show you the easiest, easiest thing to do to make these pockets. You're going to go, really? There's like, you're really showing me how to make a pocket this way? Yes, yes, and yes. All right. So let me pull this out onto my cutting table and let's pull this down. All right. Okay. So do, 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 do. Here we go. So this is the top of my apron right here. I'm going to pull this down to the bottom. Now, I discovered something too that was kind of extra, kind of a little extra cool benefit to this. When I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up and boom, there's my pocket. I mean, truly, does it get any easier? I don't think so. <laughs> yep. You, you heard that right. I am taking the bottom. I'm folding it up, up about, I don't know, six inches or so. It doesn't really matter till you like the size of it. And then all I have to do is go zoop, zoop on the sewing machine. If I want to create a pocket, I could go down the middle and create a pocket. You already have finished edges here, guys. See, this even is finished at the top because it was a tea towel. Someone asked how much ribbon? Two and a half yards, approximately. Okay. Now, you're going to fold this up. You're going to stitch down the sides. You're going to stitch down the middle if you want two pockets. If you want three pockets, you're going to do, you know, however many pockets you want is how many lines you're going to do. How cool is that? Now, the other thing is that I was telling you a little extra benefit is on these particular towels, I don't see them on the other dots and stripes, but this um, ombre one happens to have, would you believe, this little twill tape that is in the, um, it was in the bottom corner. And I was like, oh, it was one of those eureka moments. I was like, hey, look at that. I have a little hanger so that I can put a little um, a dish rag or something. The kids can have a little dish rag hanging down from it. And that's already installed in there. Now, how cool is that? So that's one of those aha moments that I thought, oh, that works, right? And then I have a little Kimberbell tag there too, but kind of fun. So use this as, you know, a little loop for their little dish rag to hang down and won't they feel so special? In fact, they might even help mom or grandma with cleaning the kitchen if they have a special little loop holder just for their, their um, cleaning rag, right? So we can always wish. That's probably even the better point. Now, that's as easy as it is. Now, one more thing to tell you is that um, when you place this on your child, you want to think about this always coming undone. You don't want that, right? So what I do is I place this on my child and I would kind of see where it's comfortable sitting on their neck. And then I would do a little stitch across both sides of the ribbon so that this isn't always coming undone because you can only imagine uh, that happening, right? So do a little stitch across at the size you want it to be. You keep, can even do a little stitch going on this side and this side, again, to hold the ribbon into place. So now what's even more fun is to 
make something special in the middle, some kind of embroidery design, whether it's machine embroidery or if you're doing hand applique, you could do a cute little gingerbread man. You could do a fun Christmas tree. You could do something that's maybe a flower or a soccer ball, you know, whatever it might be, but embellish it so that it makes it even more unique and special to that child. Now, for those of you who might have an embroidery machine, Think about this. What if you put their name in really big letters going across the pocket? You do that beforehand on the back side, you know, just measuring where you're going to be at. And then you just pull your pocket up. And even if it's not exactly centered, oh my goodness, you could actually change the level of your pockets so you wouldn't even know that you had any issues with centering, right? So, you know, I can see, you know, Rachel's name going right across this pocket. How cute would that be? Or you could do other fun designs. You could use the Kimberbell clear blue tiles and, you know, actually embroider a fun quilting design on here. And now you have a decorative pocket. So, it just doesn't get any simpler than that, right? Some of you are saying you could put in a whisk. Yes, that would be really fun. Have a little whisk there. Have some measuring spoons hanging down from there. I could think of all kinds of fun ideas. So that is the tea towel apron. I'll show you the one that I just completed, which I, I'm so excited about. I used the red tea towel on this one. And here are my pockets. You can see that there's two pockets here. A crayon apron would be super cute, Cheryl. Yes, it would. All you would have to do is you measure up to where, um, how tall the crayons are. Well, about an inch shorter than the crayons, so the crayon tips stick out. And then you're just doing channels that are about three-fourths of an inch all the way down, and you would have a darling little crayon apron, which is super fun. But does anyone recognize this applique I used? Anyone, anyone? And the buttons? Pretty fun. Where did I get this applique? Winner, winner, chicken dinner, whoever shares it. <laughs> we'll give you a shout out. Where did this applique come from is the question. <laughs> Karen says, now Chris is going to crave crayon smells. You're not a kidding. <laughs> Charlene, you are correct. Candy Cane Lane is where this came from. You know, I'm all about using designs in more than one way. And I love Candy Cane Lane um, as a pillow. But I take a look at that and I say, what else can I do with it, right? And so I decided to take the little hot cocoa design and uh, for the little hot cocoa stand. And that's what I added. And then I took the winter uh, buttons that have the hot cocoa. Let's see if you can see that. Whoops. Do, do, do. See? And I just sewed on the little hot cocoa mugs that are the winter buttons right there and right there. How fun is that? Dee says she was just, she just finished making the hot cocoa block. So cute. And Gloria was just thinking the little house from there would be cute. Yes. In fact, Gloria, that's what I was thinking about putting on this one. So I'm going to put the little house on this one and I'm going to make it look like a little gingerbread house. So I'm going to try and add maybe some little, I don't know, can candy buttons or something to make it look like a gingerbread house, which would be fun. Charlene says you could even add the lights. Yeah, you definitely could. You could add the lights here. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Candy Cane Lane, do you see how it has these little holes here? It's okay to not have the lights. It still gives the illusion of a light, but the little, these are meant for little fairy lights that go inside of here. And so, boy, that would be something special too, wouldn't it? To do the little fairy lights. So super, super easy project to make. It might be fun even to make it with the kids and say, you know, come on over, let's sew an apron together and let them embellish it just as they would like to. Yes, I love that idea, Janet said a rickrack roof would be cute on the gingerbread roof. Yes, 
That's a great idea because if you used like a white rickrack, it would look like icing. Ooh, I think I might do that. I think I'm going to take that idea, Jenna. I like it and um, create something there. Uh, let's see. I do have some more up close photos that I just took of this apron hanging up. So here it is. You can see the little pockets at the bottom. And here's a little bit more up close so you can see the buttons and the hot cocoa stand. Here's one hanging down and one more right here with the whisk. And those snowflakes are actually stitched on, but then there's also a couple snowflake buttons. So the buttons I got from the Cozy Winter Collection from Timberbell. And they have fun little snowflakes in there. And they have a penguin and a snowman. Aren't those cute? And then of course they also have the hot cocoa mugs, which is what I put there. Just so dang fun. So anytime you can embellish with buttons, it's always a win. Um, yes, Susan, uh, if you do the fairy lights, you can make a pocket in the back to hold the on and off remote. Absolutely. Boy, those, the, uh, can you imagine the kids' eyes when they see it light up? What? You would be the best grandma on the block. <laughs> or the best auntie, right? So that is the tea towel apron. Hey mom, mom's on here. <laughs> um, Mary said, so very cute. Wish I had a little boy or girl to make one for. Yes. You know, you might even consider, if you just love to, love to make things like this, you might consider making one for a neighbor or for a niece or nephew or to donate it to, um, you know, a charity or something like that. You could take the same idea and actually make an adult size apron as well if you wanted to. Uh, let's see, what other questions? Yes, Charlene, definitely hot cocoa needs to go with it for sure, for sure. Oh, yes, there is a gingerbread house in Ginger's kitchen bench pillow. In fact, I bet there'd be a lot of cute designs on the Ginger's kitchen bench pillow that you could use on these aprons. That would be a lot of fun. Great idea, Dee. Yep, crystals would work, definitely. And Janet said the same thing, to put some hot fix crystals where the light would be. That would be darling, darling. Okay, so there we go. Let's see. Do we have any other questions? I hope that all made sense. Um, cute. Sable could put dinosaurs, cars in for a boy or a girl. Yeah, you could do, you could, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless, truly. When you think about it, like just pulling up that apron, the apron pocket, and, you know, depending on the size you do and how many channels you make, it would be so fun to be super creative and think of all the fun things you could do with it. Yes, um, Bella Box bonus designs. For those of you who got the Bella Box, you have some darling bonus designs in that box that this would be super cute um, on the aprons for sure. Okay, um, Linda made aprons to sell at a craft show and also tea towel aprons for her granddaughter. That's wonderful. I hope it was wildly successful for you, Linda. That's great. 